The fact that the sun's more dense than Pete Hegseth trying to learn security protocols is a weird sciencey fact that boggles my mind. Space is full of a lot of empty space, which is probably why they call it space. But within that empty space, there's a lot of big stuff. You know, there's planets and comets and asteroids and moons. And of course, twinkle twinkle little stars that aren't so little. And one of those not so little stars is our very own sun, which despite being called a yellow dwarf, it assures us is actually of average size. But average size on a cosmic scale is still pretty huge. Just to put it into perspective, the sun is 109 times wider than our Earth, which might not sound that drastically different, but you could put 1.3 million Earths inside of the sun. Which is why math is fucking witchcraft, all right? How 109 times wider is 1.3 million times more volume is, is just fucking insane. And just to give you an idea of just how big a star can get, the biggest star that we know of in the galaxy is over 1,700 times wider than our sun. That is unfathomable. Fathomable. Fathomable. Why is that such a hard word to say? Unfathomable. I really gotta enunciate that one. But even being so big, it's volume only only accounts for 0.00001% of the volume of our solar system. But here's where it really gets trippy, because even with all of the other stuff in our solar system, even with all eight or nine other planets, depending on how you feel about Mickey Mouse's dog, with all the asteroids and comets and dwarf planets and moons, even taking into account just how big planets like Jupiter and Saturn are, with Jupiter having a mass 318 times larger than Earth, the sun accounts for 99.86% of all mass in the solar system. That is insane. Like, statistically, we basically don't even exist. But it is thanks to all of the mass that the sun has that we don't drift off aimlessly through space. See, gravity is generated by the mass of an object. For example, Donald Trump is only the flabby fat fuck he is because he's here on Earth, but if we put him on Elon's diet plan and shipped him to Mars, he'd lose a lot of weight. He'd still be flabby and, you know, physically fat, but a lot lighter because Mars is smaller. And so the reason we don't fly off aimlessly into space is because the sun, with all of its mass is constantly trying to pull us into its very, very warm embrace. But then what stops us from going all galactically Chernobyl and flying off into the giant nuclear reactor we're orbiting around? Well, in the words of Ricky Bobby, it's all about speed. Hot, nasty, badass speed. See, the Earth is traveling really fast, about 666,000 miles per hour. And that speed is constantly wanting to push us outward. You know, kind of like a ball on the end of a string you're spinning around. And all of the planets in our solar system have ended up in this perfect balance, where the pull that the sun is pulling us in is perfectly counteracted by the speed that we are moving away from it. And that keeps us reined in in a consistent orbit. That's actually the way that satellites and like our moon orbit us. And it's funny because you would think that it'd be easy to shoot shit into the sun with all of its gravitational pull, but that is not the case. It actually takes 55 times more energy to get a probe to the sun than it does to Mars. And that's because we are moving so fast. So when we launch something into space, it's moving at the speed that we are moving. And we need to slow it down a lot, but putting the brakes on at 666,000 miles per hour takes a lot of energy. And so when NASA launched the Parker Space Probe in 2018 to go probe really close to the sun, they had to figure out how to do just that. And they did it with some big rockets and some really creative driving. It performed seven Venus gravity assists where it flew close to Venus and got in its gravitational pull to help slow it down some more. And that took seven years before entering its final orbit 3.8 million miles from the sun surface. But here just to blow your mind even more, while shedding 53,000 miles an hour of sideways speed, which is speed relative to Earth's orbit, it simultaneously became the fastest man-made object in history, speeding up to 430,000 miles an hour of actual speed around the sun. It's weird. It, it became the fastest thing we ever made while slowing down because space is, is a crazy place. And the fact that in spite of all of the seriously sizable shit spinning in our solar system, the sun sitting in the sun is the only thing of statistical significance? Well, that is pretty mind-boggling.